This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. This time we're talking about Miss Marvel, Episode 4, Seeing Red. Nanny, why did you send this to me? I- am I... A djinn? Of course. At least that is what my father told me. How are you so casual about this? I, I, I don't see what the whole fuss is about. It's just genetics. No. You're focusing on the wrong things. It is not about how I see the vision or if you are a jinn. The important thing is that when the bangle was used the last time, it saved my life. Back, fellow defenders, to TV podcast industries. We are talking about Miss Marvel episode four, Seeing Red. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow defenders. I am one of your other hosts, John. Excellent. We're going to be going into full spoiler filled detail for Miss Marvel episode four in this episode. But I do have one question before we go into our spoiler filled chat. In that kind of clip that I took from the episode and the conversation between Kamala and her nanny, yeah? Yeah. Was Nanny making a pun about the fact that gin is all to do with genetics? Is she saying it's all <laughs> genetics or not? I just thought she was a very enlightened lady. She was. She was awesome. Yeah. I love her. And in, love in fact, that statement is true whether she was giving a pun or not. It because is. the pun would be excellent. <laughs> I love the pun, though. I, I wish it was right. Unfortunately, I don't think it's in the subtitles written that way. But maybe the subtitle person got that wrong. He's not giving credit <laughs> for the humor of Nanny. <laughs> excellent stuff. Uh, Chris, unfortunately, isn't with us for this episode. But uh, the two of us are here to break down all of uh, Miss Marvel Episode 4 in full spoiler-filled detail. So go ahead and watch it. Make sure you watch the episode. A really good one this week as well. Um, lots of really interesting stuff. Yep, there certainly is a mm. lot of interesting stuff. Yes. I guess as well it kicks us off into, dare I say it, almost a flashback type of moment as well right at the end. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely talk about all of that. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, you can subscribe to us. Just look for TV Podcast Industries wherever you subscribe to podcasts or pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com uh, where I have loads of links up there uh, for you to subscribe in any podcast catcher. We also want to hear your thoughts. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com uh, with any thoughts on any of the shows that we're covering. Uh, we are covering this show, Miss Marvel. We're covering... Um, the Boys every week as well, a very different show than Miss Marvel. Uh, and we will be covering uh, Umbrella Academy coming up uh, next month, just once we uh, close out one of these two shows uh, that we're covering yes. at the moment. I uh, want to make sure that we give the time that Umbrella Academy Season 3 deserves, right? Yes, because spoilers, I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Isn't really it? good. Yeah, yeah really yeah. enjoying it. Good stuff. Will we get into this discussion about Miss Marvel, John? Definitely. Derek, what are some of the who, what, were, when, how details? <laughs> the people behind the show. Yes, the executive producers for this series are Kevin Feige, <gasps> Louis Desposito, <gasps> Victoria Alonso, Bisha K. Lee, and Alar Ben Fala, the directors. Excellent stuff. Yeah. Head writer for the show is Bisha Kaylee. We've mentioned her a few times so far. Uh, this episode was directed by Charmin Obeyed Shinoi. Now, Charmin is a director also from Karachi in, in Pakistan, where this episode is based, which I thought Excellent was really interesting. Uh, and she directs the next episode of Miss Marvel. Something else really interesting from her past as well, John. She's won two Oscars for documentaries. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, so she uh, did a documentary in 2012 called Saving Face and a documentary, I think it was 2016, uh, A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness, and won Oscars for both of those. So For directing them? Mm, for directing both of those. Interesting. I mean, given Eternals has, you know, by Oscar-winning director Chloe Zhao, mm. um, so I think they should have opened up this episode of Miss Marvel as well with by Oscar-winning director Shamin Abid Chinoy. Mm, that would have been cool, wouldn't it? It would have been very smart. Um, it would have been. Yeah, but very cool to have her on board for, for these two episodes. And again, one of the most, uh, I suppose, one of the most celebrated Pakistani directors. Yeah. Um, 
Good stuff. Given, given two Oscars. That's awesome. The story for the episode was written by Sabir Prasada. Uh, the teleplay was written by Sabir, AC Bradley, and Matthew Chauncey. We mentioned AC Bradley and Matthew Chauncey last week as being uh, two of the writers on What If, and they uh, were co writers on episode three of the show. Yeah. Uh, but Sabir Prasada, we haven't spoken about him for a little while. And when I say a little while, I mean about six weeks. Yes. Uh, because he was a writer on three episodes of Moon Knight. Exactly. Uh, I thought I recognized the name. My yeah. memory isn't going. See, John? I'm not going senile. The things I'm saying are going into your brain, I think, is what you really mean. And staying, more importantly. (laughs) That never happens after, what, 15 years together? (laughs) Uh, I'm surprised at that, but excellent. So great to have uh, Sabir back on board. And you can kind of see the touches. You know, we're now in a foreign country. We have uh, battles going on in the local city as well, within within Karachi here. Um, So interesting that he also wrote episodes that were based in Egypt back in in Moon Knight. So that's quite cool, isn't it? Good stuff. Excellent. Well, John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Miss Marvel Episode 4, Seeing Red? Sure. Following a hidden attack by the Jinn at her brother's wedding, Kamala Khan and her mother, Moniba, travel to Karachi to visit her nanny and cousins. Kamala is hoping to learn more about the origin of the bangle and her great-grandmother, Aisha, from her nanny. While there, she meets Kareem and Walid, members of the Red Daggers, who protect the Earth from the Unseen and the Clandestine. Walid helps Kamala to focus her power and teaches her of the clandestine's true plan to break the null border between their dimension and ours. If this power barrier is broken, our world will be destroyed. After breaking out of the Department of Damage Control's Supermax prison, the Jinn leave Cameron behind, but also travel to Pakistan to find Kamala and retrieve the bangle. They attack the Red Daggers and Kamala in Karachi. In the battle through the streets of Karachi, two of the clandestine are killed along with Walid from the Red Daggers. When their leader Najma faces off against Kamala, her weapon clashes with Kamala's bangle, sending her back in time to 1947 and the train that brought her Nani to Pakistan during the partition of India. Excellent. Now... I think that's what happened. We probably will only know next week for definite if that's exactly what's happened. Has she gone into a vision or has she gone back in time to 1947? At the moment, I'm just guessing, because of how the episode closed, that she's been sent back in time, right? I guess so. I think she has more, seemingly has more agency hmm. uh, in this moment. You know, she's getting up on top of the train. Yeah. It's after Walid has given us some further teaching on how to sort of deal with that power, Mm -hmm. but it comes from the clash of these two supernatural um, pieces of kit, effectively. So I guess that may be uh, one of the reasons for it as well. Absolutely. So we're going to have a bit of a Marty McFly situation from Back to the Future. Well, and also, you know, we do get that inscription uh, on the bangle uh, translated by uh, Walid of the Red Daggers saying, what you seek is seeking you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess there's an element here of cat and mouse or chicken and egg or elephant and giraffe, whatever (laughs) animal way you want to sort of deal with that concept. I've never heard that one before. No, I haven't either. I just made it up on the hoof. Um, I might just use it from now on. Another animal uh, (laughs) sort of expression. I like it. Yes. So, you know, there's that element here as well, which, yeah. you know, does give the sense that Kamala has probably gone, Actually gone back to 1947. Yeah. Interesting stuff. We'll definitely find out about that next week. We're going to go into talking about the episode in full spoiler filled detail. The way we do uh, this for Miss Marvel is talking about our top three marvelous moments from the episode. So let's start out. With our marvellous moment number one, we are in Karachi in Pakistan. So uh, Kamala and Maniba going to Karachi is our first point, really. Yeah, we certainly are. I mm. think, interestingly, given what happened at the wedding, given mm. that on the flight there is the suggestion from Kamala's mother that she places the blame on Kamala, mm-hmm. it is also very interesting that she is on a flight to Karachi. It but it is. is dealt with, you know... She does, Maniba, her mom does kind of justify it because her mother is insisting, her mother is Mm -hmm. older. And so for this moment in time to allow her to see her grandmother and her cousins, there is a truce here between the two. And 
it, you know, it is on the insistence of her own mother, Moniba's mother, yeah. uh, Nani, that this happens. Yeah. So, so you can understand it, and it is dealt with very quickly and yeah. and well. I think it is, but I think as you also see throughout the episode, you do see that Maniba will do anything for her mother as well. Yes. So that kind of does come across. But I do <laughs> like the irony of the fact that they specifically call out that Kamala has been grounded and. It's on a flight, which is the exact opposite of being grounded as being yeah, near exactly. flying. So I, thought, I, I, I like that little touch of a joke there. And I do like the fact that Moniba will do anything for her mother, mm-hmm. includes going on a cleaning rampage for oh, hours. Yes. So, like, her mother is actually having to escape the rampaging daughter mm-hmm. um, and her cleaning spree. Yeah. So I, I really like that. Yeah, because let's, let's talk about that a bit because that's kind of the, the central part of them being Karachi is, is meeting up with um, uh, Kamala's grandmother. It feels like it's been a while um, since Kamala's been there. She certainly has been to Karachi before. She mentioned the dog uh, yeah. has grown. Now, the dog looks quite old. The dog looks, uh, I would pr- estimate, about 12 or 13. Like It looks like an older dog, and she's calling him puppy. So it seems like it's probably been four or five years or more since uh, Kamala had been there. She mentions the house looks much, much bigger than she remembers it, so maybe a much more distant memory. So they certainly don't connect as often as um they'd like to and don't go back as often. No, as and I would say it's it's connecting mainly by phone. So yeah. it, it is all those things. But I, I think this whole time in Karachi is actually is really good. It's really important. You know, you start to get into, you know, the nitty gritty of the Khan family's mm-hmm. history here by coming to Karachi, yeah. seeing Nani and you know, the, the, and there's some great little moments in here between um, Kamala and Nani, Maniba and her mother, mm-hmm. uh, and then Maniba and Kamala. Yeah. Um, you know, so all this generational talks and um, sort of the history of the family being sort of passed along or the relationships between one another you know there's that really nice moment from Maniba you know as she is continuing her cleaning rampage and you know she's saying well all these toffee boxes are over the place yeah. and um, her mom just says well they're the ones you liked I got them for you and mm-hmm. um, I've just eaten them because I you've not most of the toffee. Yeah, stuff. because yeah. You, you haven't been back exactly. often enough. Exactly. Um, and you know, just the the chat about why Maniba um left to go to um the to the USA. You know, it was she she mm. just needed a change to get away because um they were being shunned because of. Uh, the crazy theories of my mother, yes. of Nani. You know, her, her, her dad left and there were these crazy theories. It was affecting her effectively social circles mm-hmm. and, and neighbors and how she was viewed. And she just needed that, that change. And, you know, she just say, when all I needed, I didn't need crazy theories. I just needed my mother. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, you know, really just nice characterization as, and, defining that that relationship um, really as well and more and, and more than that because you you would suspect by the conversations that um nani has with kamala that she's telling her stories of the jinn she's telling her stories of the things that her father told her and of her her mother um and the powers that they have access to because she seems pretty plain and open with Kamala when she's talking to her about the history of the gin and the genetics and the family. So I presume she had told that to her mother in the past, but Maniba yeah. is is very strict and very straight-laced. She's not willing to take the flights of fancy that her mother wear. And that does tend to happen in families, doesn't it? The most conservative parents tend to have the much more free children and the much more free parents have very conservative children. It seems that that's what's happened in this, ma- this family. It's jumped a generation and exactly, now we have a very exactly. flighty... Kamala, who would seem very similar to her grandmother. Yeah, I mean, but also, Maniba didn't have the bangle, as far as we know so Absolutely, far. Absolutely, but remember how we were introduced to Kamala in the first episode. She was head in the clouds, always thinking in, in fantasy land that's all the true. time. So, yeah. so she has that in her, where it seems like Maniba has fought against that. And I think that's part of that idea of her going around the house, cleaning up and putting everything in its right place, exactly. which is very much Maniba's way of dealing with how she's grown up almost. She may have more of her father's side and mm. personality. So, 
I really like that. I love then how Maniba, though, after Kamala has come back from the the beach bonfire, Mm -hmm. shares those toffees uh, with Kamala, you know, and just has the laugh about they're so hard, you need, like, strong teeth and certainly no false teeth for it kind of Mm -hmm. thing, you know? So I really just liked all these different... Um, intergenerational yeah. chit chats that were going on uh, between all the female members of the Khan family. I yeah. mean, the other one I really, really enjoyed was with with Nani and with Kamala. Where you know, Kamala is again almost saying, "I I don't understand everything. I don't really fully know." Um, who I am or what Mm -hmm. I am, you know, figuring this out. And Nani comes and says, you know, my passport says Pakistani, my roots are Indian. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and it's that people are claiming their identity based on an old Englishman uh, fleeing from their country, you know, referring to the partition. And, you know, she just says it's a big education even me at this age, I'm still figuring these things out. Exactly. It never ends. You don't suddenly have or know everything no, about answers, yourself. Exactly. You know, you don't have all the answers. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I really enjoyed that conversation because mm-hmm. it's it's just so kind of, it feels to me just so real. Yeah. You know, and here, I guess, living in Ireland... Mm -hmm. You know, there is that idea of what is identity. Again, it's probably down to the Brits as to why that is, you know, (laughs) that issue of identity is so complex here in Ireland. Absolutely. Um, We still have a border at the north of our country. Yeah, yeah, but as well with the Belfast Agreement in Ireland, it's that people in Northern Ireland could have the British passport or the Irish passport because of the European connection with the European Union. Mm -hmm. I digress, but the point is, that really kind of hit home to me, yeah. that element that that same idea of identity mm-hmm. and and people are more open or more stringent about what that may mean. Yeah. And yet we have a, you know, old lady kind of giving it as reality. Absolutely. Yes, my passport says one thing, but I was born and brought up in now another country exactly. when they used to be one. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of, uh, I think, really interesting conversations throughout this. You yeah, know? it's fascinating, isn't it? I remember a, a documentary we watched many years ago where there was a quote in the documentary saying the creation of Europe was decided in rooms by men and maps, effectively. And the setup of so many countries have been ruined and destroyed by people in rooms with maps. Um, oh, absolutely. Drawing lines across them for whatever made sense Africa to them. is the prime example absolutely. that was effectively split up in yeah. Europe. Yeah, which is, you know, that's the that's it, it's so interesting that she's mentioning that. And there's a couple of other things that tie into this as well in, in the show, which I think are interesting. So you mentioned about her being Indian for her whole life and until she had to move to Pakistan and our passport says she's Pakistani. So that's part of it. We get the offer from Maniba to move her to America. So we now know that that's the kind of question that's going on in her mind. If she moves to America with the cans and moves in with Maniba and, and the family, what does that change to her identity? She's now exactly an ex-Pakistani living in America. That's a massive change. So we know more about what's going on in this character's mind. It's. I think this is such an interesting choice because you've just had a massive family wedding. The grandson in the family getting married which she didn't travel over for also the cousins didn't travel over for and it would be just absolutely standard in a normal movie or a normal tv show for to expedite that mash it together and go they all came over for the wedding exactly maniba and kamala went back but what you're doing here is saying we have one family we have loads of people who traveled over but they're not the only family in in the cans there's more to learn there's more behind them and i think that's a really good impetus for the showrunner here to to tell this really much bigger story about the the wider world it, it adds, of the characters. It adds nuance, it adds mm-hmm. complexity to the storyline yeah. um, that is also important yeah. for this family and is more than likely replicated across a whole range of families that are split um, or, or separated 
uh, because of migration Absolutely. however that happens yeah. so it, it you know it's really important yes it's only the irish sea but mm -hmm. you know my family's in the uk yes yeah. that's a stone's throw in comparison mm -hmm. uh, but your family's similarly you have brothers in america, america yeah. and family in australia yeah. so it's it is all that kind of sort of nuance, complexity, and reality that most families find themselves in, mm -hmm. that people move to different places. That Absolutely. can be within a small country like Ireland, yeah. a big country like the US or Canada, like, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. going from east to west coast, or to a different country entirely. Exactly. So um, it just is the complexity of what happens, you know? And um, otherwise you get the the head of the valley syndrome where everyone looks the same um, with blonde-haired blue eyes or, you know, the, the midwitch cuckoo kind of <laughs> element to it. So, uh, yes, we've just watched all yes. episodes of midwitch cookies as well, so that's possibly Village why it's in Village of the your... damned, yes. head of the valleys. <laughs> that's probably why that's in your head. Um, one of the things I really like about, uh, about this as well is this allows an opportunity for Kamala to be fish out of water as well. So we've had it yes. focused on New Jersey. We've had it focused on Kamala and her friends, her little unit. Then we've had the family unit that's all around them that uh, we're all setting up for the wedding, all the, uh, the Illuminantes effectively. And now we have this moment of Kamala being taken out of all of that to discover who she is. But the people surrounding her, she doesn't know that well. Yeah, she's making new friendships. She's dealing with new people for the first for the first time that we've seen her in the series. Really uh, trying to kind of make her own way, I suppose, which I think is a really good thing to do if you're going to have a six episode series. You need to, you know, put more challenges or do different things with your characters. So she could have been the uh, local neighborhood Miss Marvel, um, but I like that already there giving her another little adventure to have. Yeah, exactly. And I th I think as well the adventure of these dis these discussions, you know, I mean no sooner has Kamala uh, arrived in Pakistan, she's met the cousins. Uh -huh. I, I liked all that kind of little banter, you know, you had about the dog, but it yeah. was and um, the her her cousin who has grown taller, mm -hmm. the he he comes he retorts back to her with you're still small you haven't grown at all, uh, exactly. haven't grown at all. <laughs> but you know as well it is going straight in with that chat between N nanny and and kamala as mm -hmm. well uh, because she needs to figure out um the bangle what does it mean mm -hmm. um and again it, it's to nani's kind of openness here uh, whether it's about the gin it's it's genetics my father told me yeah. um or uh, just simply saying to Kamala, I mean, the two points that I thought were really, really nice, you know, that she's focusing on the wrong thing, that the mm. bangle was last used for good. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be evil because the clandestine ha have said uh, what they're going to use it mm -hmm. for is potentially evil by trying to rip it away from it, as far as she knows at the moment. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, in terms of trying to figure out the the bangle, Kamala just says, "I'm breaking more things than I fix," and I loved um, the response. You know, Nani says, um, "When you have lost what I have, you learn to find the beauty in the pieces." In the pieces which yes. Love it. you know, as you see all these different pieces from her history that she's drawn, mm -hmm. or the photographs that she's kept, or the little trinkets yeah. in in that room of hers. And I thought that you know that to me, immediately says Nani is an open and positive person. Yeah. Yes, she's fought through adversity. She's had bad things happen to her. You know, her own daughter has left to go to America, mm -hmm. you know, hasn't got that connection there. Yet, she's able to keep that positive view of, but I still love my daughter and yeah. her children or whatever pieces of her. Yeah. And I see them when I see them and so on, you know? So... Yeah. I think that's, uh, I thought that was really, really good. I mean, I think some really nice sentiments um, that are coming from this family, yeah. <laughs> whether it's in America or yeah. in Pakistan. And it's, uh, you know, I, I think the Khan family are, are just awesome. They and are. that's part of what I'm loving about the show. I'm loving seeing their family and what's going on and what, 
they've been through now mm-hmm. that you begin to learn from this episode. Yeah, I think it's really good. Another great character to add to the cast of wonderful characters we've seen in the show so far. The only other thing I wanted to talk about in this in this point before we move on is just the city of Karachi and how alive it feels. Oh, um, yeah. This yeah. is all filmed in Bangkok in Thailand, as far as I was, I'm aware. Um, but again, with a director from Karachi, I'm sure she was choosing angles that felt like home um, yeah. a lot and, and choosing places. Uh, it really felt like a vibrant city. I loved seeing it on screen. Really, really interesting place. And I love just those little touches of how different the culture is for Kamala as well. You know, the idea that they went out for dinner and they couldn't eat inside because Kamala was wearing a pair of jeans, which is just standard dress in America, yeah. you know. She and that those she jeans fine. were making her absolutely sweat, mm. you know, uh, to high heaven in the heat yes. the wrong choice was yeah. it the jeans or the food that she had or was it the though? food exactly yeah <laughs> uh, I, I love like you know the bartering element mm-hmm. to it as well um where you know I, i've been to places where you know you've been told oh you should barter and then you realize what you're bartering is something from 30p down to like 20p and you're yeah. like going okay this is just crazy here, here, here's the full amount exactly. and i like that they actually kind of address that you mm-hmm. know with I want one 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 and a half thousand rupees mm-hmm. for for this Polaroid. Yeah. And I'm not gonna budge on it, you know. Yeah. Um so I, I really kinda like that yeah. element of of not budging for the bar string. Yeah, it was really good. Really good. I really enjoyed this uh, these moments in Karachi. So I think we're staying Karachi maybe. Uh, with some of the cast next week while uh, while Kamala's in uh, 1947, uh, yeah. <laughs> potentially. But uh, but hopefully we'll see more uh, of Karachi the, the rest of the show because it's a really good a really good location. And we got almost like a travel um, documentary at times, seeing loads of different places there. We see the beach, we see the city, we see uh, the club uh, where they go to eat. You know, we there's there's a and um, we see the the uh, yeah. the skyline as well in that great discussion between um nani and, and kamala on the rooftop i thought that was really interesting it was really cool so yes thumbs up to karachi Abs- for me absolutely <laughs> and i think it was really good or this is what i'm assuming anyway is that the title miss marvel was also in urdu mm. uh, as well um at, in the opening credits That's and right. again i think flashes of it uh, on the graffiti in the end credits. Mm. Uh, so Not just that, the scenery really was changed from New Jersey, which we've seen for the first three episodes. Yes. It was all changed to Karachi scenery um, for the for the closing credits. Which, uh, another great touch showing, yeah, it's almost almost a different show yeah. uh, for this for this episode, which is really, really good. So it was that. really, really good. Yeah. Let's get on to our really good, marvellous <laughs> moment number two. Really good job. Where we <laughs> are meeting... The Red Daggers, yes, another bonbon for uh, Kamala <laughs> to get her teeth into. If uh, the toffee isn't too uh, tough, I guess. I like it. I like it, John. I like it. Um, yes, another. Uh, we're are we on to a love quadrangle now? I guess so. Yeah. Um, I guess I would be if I was in Kamala's <laughs> position. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yes, Kareem here. Now, there's a slight disconnect here. Um, exactly on the red daggers for me because i'm not sure this is fully explained but in comic books red the red dagger is a character yes one character here kareem seems to intimate that the red daggers is a society and then walid says who's the leader of this group says that when they wear the scarf above their face and take on the role to as a protector in the red daggers they are the red dagger yes so I don't, I'm not too sure how that works. I think I've got it right, though. It's society who are the Red Daggers, and then they have a Red Dagger that goes out and fights. Yeah, so I, I think, Helps. yeah, Walid was intimating that actually uh, Kareem is the Red Dagger because mm. of the red um, scarf that was over his um, his nose and mouth. Yeah. Uh, and he is the first one that we see with the red handled knives that mm-hmm. he is throwing at our hero straight uh, away kamala straight away yeah. which was was really i thought was was really good just like the surprise you mm-hmm. know because she she leaves her cousins to go to the train station because they're just like uh what okay we're gonna go and have coffee with exactly. our friends now in fairness i'm with kamala here you'd be at the train I, station. I would be at the train station as well and um, they're I'd really 
really kind of interesting places, dare I say it, for mm. people as much as the locomotives. Okay. But I've uh, had, we do have a lot of photographs of train stations. Across we Europe. will leave that there. Of okay. course, we'll park that for some other time. Mm. I, I'm guessing the train but podcast. The train the podcast, podcast indeed. Um, or the light railway podcast. Uh, anyway, All right. enough. Stop it, John. Stop it. <laughs> um, so I kind of assumed that Waleed was saying that Karim was the red dagger. Right. But at the same time, it was also in a, an organization that was known as the Red Daggers. So yeah. I'm guessing Waleed used to be the Red Dagger as well. So think, it's yeah. kind of the passing down of that mantle a bit. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's not 100% clear on that, mm. but it seemed to be both the organization uh, and grouping yeah. that did the work of the Red Dagger. And then there is the Red Dagger out in public, it's ultimately. Ju- it's just the tech they have seems quite advanced for just two of them. That's <laughs> that's all I was thinking. It's like, why would you need to have this amazing looking tech that they have? And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But um why would you ha- need to have that for just the two of them to talk over there <laughs> to have their conversation? I think but, they're both high tech and low tech. Okay, because daggers in furnace, oh, certainly. are relatively low tech. Yeah, certainly here yeah. in that sense. But let's talk about that initial fight between Kareem and uh, and Kamala because I thought that was such a cool introduction. It really to the was. Uh, firstly, we have an, another. Ant Man reference uh, in the show. This is where uh, Kamala's looking at the wall, and there's a, there's the whole um, kind of story of Ant Man effectively yeah. talking about inspir- inspiring people. So once again, Ant Man uh, playing a part in here. I'm now convinced we're going to get Paul Rudd at some point <laughs> in in, in a post credit <laughs> scene. Paul Rudd and um, Brie Larson uh, in that final post credit scene coming in to meet Kamala uh, would be very cool. Um, but they have this battle where. Yeah. Kamala is using her powers really well. This uh, this yeah. idea of stepping up into the air using her using her light powers and then fighting back against him. She uh, she throws the uh, the the hard light fist at Kareem to try and uh, knock him off balance as well. There's some some cool moments in this where she's blocking herself from falling as well when he's smashing it with the daggers. Yeah, uh, his really use fun. of the knives to smash the mm. the 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 crystal structure. Yeah. I loved how he kind of. Um, horse vaulted over the hand that mm-hmm. she said that she sends at him yeah. and then runs along it towards yeah. her. Cool. Um, I love the fact that he's using real daggers, you know, like mm-hmm. that. I think it, it, you do get the sense he is after her, but then you, um, you know, he's sensed the null, so That's he says, can yeah. also do that yeah. as well. Very but it, it seems like there's a, a not, you know, during the fight, there's almost a nice bit of snidey banter going on between them that also um carries on over you know you have um you have kareem or the red dagger saying giving out about her what she's wearing Mm -hmm. and and the 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 eye masks and kamala saying no one likes the outfit uh where are you from um new jersey and she goes what makes you think that maybe I'm Canadian? Mm-hmm. Um, and so all these little uh, jokes, but he knows Absolutely. about um, uh, sorry, about quickly. the Bangle and Aisha. Absolutely, and quickly, of course, the reason why he knows if she's from New Jersey is because it's written on her exactly, chest. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah. my favourite one, uh, because it's such a great line, is when they're spotted by the, the station security mm-hmm. and he says, come with me if you want to live. Of course. You know, very dramatic, uh-huh. very uh, Terminator, uh-huh. uh, but then says, I've always wanted to say that, you know, and mm-hmm. takes her to then the Red Dagger's hideout. Yes. And again, the final one um, is that a Pakistani boy band, says Kamala. So, the, <laughs> the daggers, you know, the yeah. fight just had this really nice infusion of snidey banter, mm-hmm. um, the fight choreography, yeah. um, and sort of how how the red dagger here, Kareem, is using the crystal um, structures that mm-hmm. uh, Kamala is sending out. I just thought it just was really nicely done and a Absolutely. great introduction to the red dagger. Or Kareem yeah. and um, Waleed. and potentially yeah um, a, a a number two bonbon in the picture <laughs> number three John well number, number three. three we don't you count out Bruno 
That's true. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so we're, we are talking love quadrangle at the moment. Is where we're <laughs> yes. <laughs> we weren't before. We just said triangle. So yes, don't forget Bruno like we did. <laughs> I never forget Bruno, John. I never forget Bruno. No. Um, although by the time she gets back, will he have gone to uh, He to may Caltech? have done, yes, indeed. Hmm. That would be an awful way to end the story with Bruno. It? it really will be. It would be, yeah, t- terrible. Hopefully they don't. We want to see Bruno again. Uh, love Bruno. But anyway, this is about Kareem. Um, loving the introduction of this character. It's a true Marvel um, standard comics introduction when you have two allies that are both powered or have both uh, got abilities. You always get them fight to fight at the start and then they become friends. It's all, it, it's just absolutely standard in Marvel comics. So I, I'm glad they were able to bring that into to the episode here. Um, I want to talk about one other thing in this, uh, in these sessions, I suppose, with Waleed and Kareem, um, because it feels like Walid becomes almost a mentor to Kamala and her powers. He does give her yeah. and impart some wisdom to her on how she should use her powers. Um, he talks about um, focusing it, talks about the reason why she's able to use the powers the way she is, because she's connected to Earth much more than the, the Jinn are. She's able to use the powers differently than they are. It's completely unique for her than it would have even been for Aisha. So um, I thought that was quite interesting that he's he's talking to her uh, about that and teaching her. Um, I love the passage of time here because it does feel like we've spent a few days together with them. Um, we've certainly seen her with Kareem outside of the, the times they've spent together teaching and learning with Walid. Well, and there's um, the beach, uh, the Red Dagger beach bonfire yes. where they, you know, have the nickname thing where Kimo or Kareem mm-hmm. uh, also mince meat um <laughs> and then we we get um kamala's nickname of sloth baby yes we do which we got from episode one as well 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 the little hint to the pub yes. quiz from episode one yes <laughs> thanks john well only because you said it <laughs> that's yes. true you were not on episode one so I, yeah i like that i like that we you know got that kind uh-huh. of again that immersion of kamala into you know people that aren't her family yeah. um, while she's in uh, Karachi. So that that was really nice. And, and there's a really good reason for that, which I'll talk about in our final point. But I do want to talk about the other big revelation from Believe, which is what I was talking about with the technology. Yes. Can I just say, though, first off, you know, he is clear while he, they fight the clandestine and yes. the unseen. That's right. They do fight them. This, you know, he is like the head of this Red Daggers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it the actual, you know, the headquarters, I thought was really, really well, cool, very, actually. Hidden behind a cooker in a restaurant. Yep. Loved it. And um, I just loved the patterns and the lighting and everything. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah, it was. It's awesome. Um, he also points out that anybody that would have been in the area who has powers would just be called Jin. So Jin's not really the term that, that he would use to describe the clandestine. That's something interesting because that's... They, they've they used that terminology. Um, Kamala's grandmother's used the terminology of Jim, but he's kind of saying, well, actually, even if Thor landed in the Himalayas, he'd just be called Jin. It just yeah, means and he even dollars. points to Kareem as well. So, you know, Kareem certainly has knife abilities. Mm-hmm. He can sense Noor. He can sense the Noor, yes. So who knows where that power may or may not sort of reach. Yes, exactly. But what... Well, he reveals is the plan of the clandestine or the jinn is to get the bangle back and break down the border between the dimension they come from and our our plane, our land, effectively. So I like that there's a connection there with borders because we've had that conversation from Nani that, you know, the idea of putting up a border between India and Pakistan completely changed her history. Yeah. And here we have the jinn trying to get back to their dimension and the border between the two is the Noor. So, yes. uh, so they've also been affected by borders in, in a way. And it would unleash their world onto ours and there will Destroy be nothing it. left, exactly. uh, says Waleed. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty serious stuff. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's our world-ending event. Our, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, so uh, so I think it's, uh, that's a very big reveal and a very cool reveal. I really like the technology that they use there. That stuff is, yeah, I, I did, stuff. actually. I thought it was really good. I mean... I think um, it, it, you know, because of the map element to mm-hmm. it as well and the room, it, you know, it felt both high tech as well as then being maybe possibly a little ancient. I mean, I was thinking, mm-hmm. you know, because it looked like sand coming yeah. up. And I think I just wonder whether it's the fact that 
CGI now is so good that mm. it looks really technological when maybe it wasn't supposed to be. I don't know, maybe. you know. Yeah. Um, but it was more like it was generated out of a, a flowing dust mm. um, almost within kind a glass cabinet. So Kind of like the Black Panther stuff, the, the opening of Black Panther. Yeah, exactly. You know, something well. along those lines. Okay. So something a bit more organic in mm. terms of the technology. So um, I, I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool. Uh, that's kind of it for me for the introduction, I guess, of the Red Daggers of Kareem and Willie, because we'll talk about them a little bit more in our final Marvelous Moment. Is there anything else? No, um, I think we should get on to our Marvelous Moment number three. Yes, Battle with the Gin. Battle with the Gin. Well, that's another podcast as well. <laughs> um, and Battle for the Gin could be another podcast as well. It could um, be. If it is... The clear liquid we're talking about, but battle here for the gin and tonic, yes. uh, we do have the the battle with the gin mm. uh, with the clandestine. And right. interestingly, let's just speak about how they got here because yeah. I have to say it was very quick. I thought, well, um, certainly when I first watched it, it was a little dark because the sun was coming in, so I didn't really catch most of it. But the thing I couldn't stop laughing actually, and that's mainly because. I love the over exaggeration of how secure this prison must be because mm. I'm I'm aware of maximum security prisons, oh, for yeah. example, but this is a super max prison. It is. So for superheroes, I mm. guess, or super villains, um, and also then we have super max, which is a burger chain here in Ireland. <laughs> so I was yes. like. Oh, it, <laughs> the, it's a burger prison. Yeah, like uh, Ham, Hamburglar prison. would be in there, for example. <laughs> would be, yes. You know, and and then um, yeah. So I just had way too many things going on in my mind as soon as they flagged up Super Ma- DODC Supermax prison. Well, the real comedy is directly afterwards when you now have people that they know are super powered beings. In regular pairs of handcuffs hanging out of pipes above, and that's pretty much all the security yeah. they have. I know they have a gun that it, can knock them out, but they didn't seem to be under too much. It didn't seem guard. to be that super max no, as a prison. Like you would be almost expecting handcuffs a la Doctor Strange from the Multiverse of Madness that he well, wore, you yeah. know, something like that. And or that I they t- wouldn't be walking them down a service uh, sort mm. of corridor because yeah. that's it, it seemed very dimly lit that's what it looked and like. not yeah. really a a proper prison or if if it was the prison was actually above them exactly. and they were walking through which i, I don't understand and mm. um, so it was a little strange yeah and um, and i think that could have being told a little better now there is a little nod here damage control in the comic books are not I think there's actually the comic books are actually a bit more comedy. Um, so they're not generally seen as very adept. So it might be a touch of that, but I might be giving the show a bit too much there as well. Cause basically a 17 year old kid is the one that fought his way out of there and yeah. got the rest of them freed. So if it wasn't for Cameron, they wouldn't have gotten out. Effectively. That's true. So, and then they leave them behind. They well, just that's, dump them there. that's the important thing. You know, I, I think there's a few important things here with his mother, Najma. I mean, mm-hmm. firstly, you know, she knows how dangerous the use of this bangle is and she's never told him. Yeah. Um, effectively, here at the Supermax prison is she tells everyone else to leave him. He's made his choice. Oof. And I love the whimper that comes back, which is, well, me? Yeah. You know, so really like, I can't believe it. Um, you know, he feels that betrayal. I, I wish mm-hmm. they'd kind of almost lingered a bit more on him on that, actually. Yeah. But also just the recap at the start of this episode, just the in terms of reminding us that she, you know, she says to Kamala, why would I help uh, people that have betrayed us? Exactly. And um, whether that means Kamala or potentially Aisha and her, her great grandmother. Mm-hmm. So, and Cameron now. And Cameron. So, you know, this is not looking good for Cameron. I mean, did he even get out? I'm expecting he will. He, I think he got out. Yeah. But I think, I think nonetheless, he his mother is fairly, um, uh, shall we say, objective and distant about him. Well, exactly. Or, it, it, you know, her true colours are finally being revealed to him. Yeah. 
And I think the contrast here to what's just happened to Cameron has to be with, with Kamala's yeah, family exactly. and how open they all are to each other and how, how much of a, a community that has become. Whereas one false move as determined by Najma means that's it, you're out, you're left behind as they fly off to another country, effectively, leaving Cameron behind on his own. So um, I was going to say that I didn't think it was actually fast because I think they did a great explanation with that passage of time, spending time with um the Red Daggers for Kamala and all the other uh, sightseeing stuff that she's done. Yeah. Effectively, they were just being brought into the prison, it looked like, and they escaped. So that's probably the day after the wedding. Yeah. And then we have a couple of days passage or a week's passage almost, and then they've arrived in Pakistan. So that moment of they've arrived, surprise, doesn't feel as quick as it may have looked on screen because we've had that passage of time with a full with a full experience of what Kamala's gone through in Yeah, Pakistan, exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. I think as well, just one final thing of the crazy thoughts running through <laughs> uh, my mind. I don't think believe that's with, right, with, <laughs> with Supermax Prison was there was a a, a UK quiz show um, in the 80s where okay. they had Supermax games. So uh, again, or, don't put up f- trigger words to me, because then I will think about various things. <laughs> I was blank things. as you blanked. Exactly. Up. Wow. Supermax game. Yeah. So, and again, I don't think there was anything supermax about this prison. So I think it could have just been done a little better. Yeah. But you're also in the Marvel Universe, and they kind of have a few big supermax prisons in the Marvel Universe <laughs> exactly. that we've already seen yeah. in movies before. So, um, yeah, this is the DODC version of a super max prison, which is not very maximum super security max, and exactly. definitely not super maximum security. It certainly uh, isn't. Excellent. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the big battle that's Surprise! going on because that is the rest of the that's the rest of the show. Right yeah. from from here on, um, right to the end is a battle Loved throughout it. the streets of Karachi, and it is fantastic. Some great moments in here. Love that they incorporated a really high speed chase. Well, let's say low speed chase on the tuk tuk and the truck. Well, exactly. Uh, the tuk tuk street escape was Great. phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Having been in one of those, I can mm-hmm. understand uh, Kamala. And certainly when they split it in two, where effectively uh, Kareem is riding on a single wheel. Effectively with a the unicycle. En- yeah, exactly. Yeah. A motorized <laughs> unicycle. Motorized unicycle. Um, with Kamala on top of his uh, shoulders. Yeah. So or on a, on his back. So I loved all of that. Yeah. I just thought, you know, the tuk-tuk um, chase was great. Yeah. The, the fact that they were being chased in one of those amazingly uh, colourful uh, deliver like trucks mm-hmm. with the fans on the front as well as, yeah. um, for the for the um, decoration. But I think they're also used to like the push her through the vents yeah. at the front. Uh, really enjoyed that. And I loved actually the the whole um, foggy fight actually with Walid at the Red Dagger base, where yes. he put you know he effectively Kareem and Kamala are pushed uh, and a, a glass door comes down, and then you know very much Walid goes round all the clandestine mm-hmm. and just at least takes them out for it long enough so that he can escape yeah. and they can get out of the building from from their base that's been found out. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk about taking people out because we lose two of the gin by the exactly. looks of things um, yeah. in, in these scenes. Two of the guys effectively are, are one taken out by uh, Walid at the start there and then one taken out by Kareem uh, later yeah. on in the fight. So of, what do we have, total six Jin, including Cameron and Aisha, there was only four there that went, that came over to Karachi, and by the end of the episode, we only have two left. Yep, only two left. Mm. Um, the with Walid being um stabbed in the back by Najma as mm-hmm. well. I I just thought the reaction of Kareem to that was really good. You know, kind of he realizes he's still got to keep moving. Yet there's his mentor yeah. or boss, effectively. Um, dead on the street and I just love the the quick thinking of putting the pressurized canister into the boiling oil so cool. you know yeah. and it, it sort of sort of just distracting everyone mm-hmm. uh, you know or or hitting them and so uh really like that but I just thought the reaction w- was just really really good but ultimately uh yeah you you get this chase through all the streets whether it's by tuk-tuk or mm-hmm. on foot 
um, you know, along these colourful, buzzing, jostling streets that we had just seen earlier with Kamala and her cousins. You know, so yeah. it's just that that contrast to it. And I think um I thought it was really sort of nicely done. I, I did also w- wonder whether it was a, a, a Terminator reference in terms of how the clandestine run mm. in that the guy with his whippy belt uh, uh-huh. with the bald head, I, don't, I can't remember the name of that, that gin. I think it's either Salim or uh, Adam. Mm-hmm. Um, like he ran very quickly yes, and is. with not moving his head a lot, you know, very terminated to yeah. sort of chasing down and the slight grunts coming from it, almost slightly animalistic mm-hmm. in terms of the, the speed, the focus, yeah. the, the amazing sort of balance and lack of distraction that he had. You know, it was like, predatory well, focusing yeah. on and he i thought that was really good yeah he also got knocked off his feet by a truck uh yes. slamming into the side of him in a great callback to episode one of how terrible kamala's driving is yes uh, where she's told to hop in the truck drive away and she instantly puts it in reverse uh, and drives backwards of course because that's Kamala, Indeed. Right? yeah exactly <laughs> but and drives into him then exactly. in nice comedy timing yep. to save kareem as yep. well really yeah. good fun so it was it was all very kind of kinetic and yeah. really good really really enjoyed it yeah. um for sure but in those final moments then you have najma who goes for kamala with her pointy mm. it's it's kind of like a dagger it's mace it's almost like a pointed pointy mace i mm. guess and yeah. um, but in so i'm doing... trying to work out how to describe it yeah because it's got a knife on both ends and the kind of ha- handle but it's more like a it point it's more like a rounded point um mm. and it seems heavy it's like a pointed mace mm. i think but okay or yeah a two-ended dagger i guess mm. um and in defending herself, the two strike, and we get get this this well, what I'm going to describe as Kamala effectively being portaled to 1947. Back in time, yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and now got to find her way back. What's going to happen with Kamala? She's going back to a point in history that she's learned so much about. I love. That now again they've added something extra to that story we heard from her father, from Yusuf last episode where he was describing this story about Nani being saved at the train in uh, in 1947 and it's been told so often in the family that everybody can recite their parts of it everybody can recite it yeah. and now we have Kamala possibly stuck in that exact time zone probably very happy that she's heard that story so often that she could probably picture it in her mind and work out what she needs to do to get back I guess so uh, really interesting moment to leave the episode on and yeah this is definitely one where I was going oh what the next episode yeah right definitely <laughs> definitely good stuff it does beg the question though are those star lights that guided her nanny back to her father do those come from Kamala possibly it, it, instead it of is, Aisha exactly it's, we know Kamala has that power of, of the hard light it's very possible mm-hmm. um, for sure and I think in terms of the inscription on the bangle that mm-hmm. says what you seek is seeking you either that is meaning at least for kamala she is seeking her great grandmother mm-hmm. and so her great grandmother is seeking her, her mm-hmm. or that she is seeking herself effectively mm. Um, she just doesn't know that yet. Interesting, yes, yes. As you say, all yeah. these stories relate to what she did there, not yeah. Aisha. Yeah. Maybe Aisha is like the other clandestine, ultimately. Maybe. Yeah. Um, no one's heard of her, no one's seen seen her. Although Wally does know about, and the Red Daggers know about her story. They do. And I, I got the feeling they said that she what you know, she's different. To some extent, I don't know. I mean, it's not that they said she was good or they revered her, but yeah. it felt like there was something there that that's why the Red Daggers formed. I get what it you mean. goes back to her story mm-hmm. as to whatever that is and what whatever we'll find out about. Yeah, it, it was it was something like anybody who has Aisha's bangle is. It's someone that we feel positively towards, I guess. It was something that it wasn't very committal uh, of them, but it didn't It didn't feel um, like they were saying that Aisha was a bad gin like the... Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, that. I don't yeah. think it was said as explicitly as that, <laughs> but there was 
a feeling that the story of a shirt is what helped form mm. the red daggers and maybe that because she was the one that said what they were looking to do to yes. break the nor barrier between the dimensions yeah yep. but don't know for sure yeah just a working not sure. theory not sure I think that's it for our Marvelous Moments yeah. for the episode. Uh, everything that uh, we normally cover off in there. I think we've covered pretty much everything there. Uh, anything else from the episode you wanted to call out as well, John? Uh, no, nothing from me. Okay. Yeah. Well, just one final thing I wanted to call out, which was just in that chase scene through the streets, there's a moment where Kamala sees a family um, on the side of the street, all on their on the motorbike, and then uses her powers to effectively create kind of like a ramp for yeah. for them and for the truck behind them to go over the family, so they're not killed in in this high yeah. speed chase. Uh, that's something that that Kamala Khan did in her um, her animated series uh, show, effectively protecting a family from a, a runaway train, doing exactly the same thing, blocking them by putting up a, a kind of ramp. Excellent so stuff. I just thought it was a little nod yeah. to to some of the history of uh, of Kamala. So. It was kind of cool to see that in live action. Excellent. Overall, John, do you defend Miss Marvel episode four seeing red? I really, really do. I give this four and a half flying red daggers hidden teddy bear uh, out of five. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed seeing the Karachi side of the family and mm-hmm. all those different conversations. It just layered in so much more characterization, complexity, context, mm-hmm. history to this really wonderful family that yep. we've seen as well in the first three episodes in New Jersey. So I really, really enjoyed that. I loved um the the Red Daggers. Fantastic stuff. Loved their hideout. Loved Walid and Kareem as the two. And um, the just really just felt dynamic. It felt right and Kareem's connection with Kamala and um, you know R.I.P. Walid because I really enjoys yeah. sort of the the time that he was on screen explaining you know given giving the exposition the yeah. explanation as to why the Noor um, or the clandestine are, are effectively yeah. trouble here well, being the um, mentor as well to Kamala yeah, as well yeah being the mentor uh, but also just you know the intrigue, as I say, it's not entirely clear. Is Aisha maybe the person that sort of set the seed for founding the Red Dragons? Mm. Is Aisha um, Kamala's great grandmother? Is she like the other clandestine, mm. like we, we we're seeing here uh, with uh, Najma uh, and the rest of the unseen? Mm. You know, and the threat that they pose, the 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 fights between Kareem. And um, Kamala was just really, just really nicely done for like, yeah. you know, a, dare I say it, a young person's fight. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I know, I, wow, I feel okay. old. Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, there was still real danger there yeah. because he was throwing actual knives. Absolutely. And, you know, and then at the same time, you get that full blown fight when the clandestine sort of roll in uh, and, mm-hmm. and do the surprise attack on the headquarters yep. of the Red Daggers. So I, I just thought this was really good. And then the intrigue of Kamala in 1947 uh, with the train at, at the train station, with partition Great being, yeah. you know, in progress mm-hmm. and, and what that means, the intrigue around that, you know, is Kamala the one that set those stars flying? Mm-hmm. Was it Aisha? Does she battle Aisha effectively mm-hmm. in this moment? Um, is Aisha trapped in 1947? Mm-hmm. No one's seen or heard of her since in some way. So right. yeah. loads of intrigue, lots of excitement, and can't wait for the next episode. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I give this a four and a half flying red daggers, hidden teddy bears out of five. Okay. I'm still trying to work out exactly what that means for the defenders, but I think I know. I think I know. <laughs> It's a hidden teddy bear because it has another meaning and it will form part of the pub quiz. Ooh, oh, sorry, good. the slushy bar quiz. Yes. 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 Derek, do you defend this episode of Miss Marvel? I do defend this episode, but you've gone through uh, most of the episode and we've talked about it. Uh, between ourselves. Nothing uh, particularly to add here. But I will say, if you thought the fight between Kareem and Kamala was really good, Aman Vellani was interviewed this week about uh, that fight, saying it took place in about, 50 or 60 degree temperatures in Thailand oh, wow. and she was wearing that outfit 
what do the face are wearing the jeans and and jacket and t-shirt oh, wow. and she said Melt. she said she sweated so much they had to change it after almost every punch of the fight so um it was a really tough fight to, and to, to film and a really tough uh, day they had so i'm glad it looked so good on screen wow yeah <laughs> you know when you when you pay the it price was. and sweat um, yeah. It comes across, right? It was superb. Exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. As you said, John, let's head on over to the slushy bar or maybe the golf club. Let's go to the golf club for a slushy. How about that? Uh, for our I think slushy would, bar quiz. I think we'd have to sit in the car park. And it was a boat club. <laughs> it was a boat club. Yes. yes that's so right. I, I think, uh, yes, we would have to sit in the car park if yeah. we ordered a slushy from either a golf club or a boat club. I think... They're probably more whiskey on the rocks kind of mm. venues or, you know, champers or something Not along those Miss lines. for Miss Marvel. She's way too young for for whiskey on the rocks, John. Well, maybe. <laughs> anyway. But, but not uh, the rest of her family, I don't Let's think. Let's get on to our poll quiz question for this week. Our slushy sl- bar our quiz. Our slushy bar quiz question for this week. John, what is question four? Question four. Kamala's flying teddy bear is actually what? Okay. So to repeat the question, Kamala's flying teddy bear is actually what? And when I say flying teddy bear, it was in the plane. Mm -hmm. It was also referred to that by her cousin when they come up to get her out of bed to go to the boat club. So it is that teddy bear. I guess it would be a stuffed toy or... um, in the for- in the shape of a sloth. Yes. So what actually is it? What, what is, is the function what is real that purpose? Kamala, without giving you the answer, mm-hmm. is fighting for them to realise right. that it actually is and that it's not a teddy bear? Excellent. That's the fourth question in our slushy bar quiz for the season. Put all the answers together. Email us into feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with all the answers at the end of the season and you could be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Miss Marvel goodies. Yes. Enough clues, Derek? I think so. I think so. Excellent. What I do love is usually we ask these questions and then it seems like in Miss Marvel, the next episode really underlines what the, <laughs> what the actual answer is. So uh, if you don't know it, just go back and watch the episode. You'll definitely see it. This episode of TV Podcast Industries is brought to you by our supporters over on Patreon, including Angie Arhus. Thank you so much, Angie, for your support. Yes, great stuff. Thank you, Angie, for the support you give us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Also, fellow defenders, you can support us monthly for any amount over on patreon.com forward slash TV podcast industries. Or if you would like to support us with a one off donation, you can also head on over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash TVPI where you can buy us a coffee. Um, and of course, remember, importantly that you can support us by subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with friends family or flying teddy bears uh, (laughs) you name it uh, because sharing the podcast is of course sharing the love absolutely and some more love that has been shared which is feedback uh, from our wonderful fellow defenders Uh, let's get on to some feedback our first email comes in from jerry who says hey guys this episode was the best of the season so far the education of the culture is always enlightening we learn more about the relationship between her mother and her grandmother i have questions though does her mother know she is a djinn or has she dismissed that into the fantasy that her mother tells her interesting stuff Mm -hmm. there jerry i I wonder the recognition of the bangle in the box that was Mm -hmm. sent over. I think Maniba is hiding more than she's letting on. And I think in particular, you know, she is aware of the crazy theories, as she says. So it's not like she's not aware of that. And I guess she's maybe suppressing it because if it is the case that... um, you know, as she says, she just needed that change because people were shunning her, mm-hmm. looking at her strangely, needed to start that new life to escape that judgment yeah. um, or from the community. Then I'm wondering if, yeah, it's just kind of like, I don't want anything to do with this and suppressing it. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like she doesn't know she's a djinn, doesn't know that she's part of that Um of that side of the family with that coming up, but it feels like she's completely dismissed it as just theories and crazy rantings from her mom for so long now that she doesn't, she doesn't believe that side of things is what it feels like. But uh, 
I think we might know more. I think we might yeah. see a little more in the future of that of that side of it. So we'll know for definite by the end of the season. But uh, right now, I feel like she's dismissed the whole thing as as if it's a fantasy from her mother. Uh, Jerry continues. Kamala's grandmother is really wealthy. Is this something Kamala didn't realize? The Red Daggers. I wish we got a bit more information on them. There were deaths in this episode. Lots of them. Yes specifically to reinforce the importance of the bangle. Overall, the sweetness of the earlier episodes has been replaced by red curry beef over rice. I have dread for Kamala. The partition is one of the worst events in human history that somehow does not get talked about much. Jerry in Niceville. Thanks for the thoughts overall, Jerry. Uh, really good to hear from you about, about this episode of Miss Marvel. Um, it's really interesting. I know Jerry's kind of been giving his rating as he's been going along of, of the show and yeah. not being for him, the sweetness of it for uh, for the series so far. So interesting that that with its one episode, it's kind of flipped and having dread for Kamala now as to what she's going to be going through. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jerry, for the feedback. Mm. Really, um, it, it's interesting, isn't it? I guess um, it could have been that the the wealth that the, the family had whilst they were in India before partition, um, they were able to bring enough of it back to establish you know, um, the house that they do have, because mm-hmm. it is a big house um, the, in, in Karachi, for it's sure. Job, I think maybe with Kamala, it might be more that she was a, a lot younger mm-hmm. um, back when she last visited. And maybe, you know, I guess whether families understand at certain times whether they're wealthy or not or mm. you know poor or middling or whatever it might be you know it's difficult it's only other people that really tell you that unless your parents are saying we're poor we can't right. feed the kid i get do you know what i mean it's like it's it depends i guess and um, i think the boat club um oh yeah they're they're from nailed. rich part of uh society yeah. in karachi if yeah. they're at a boat club absolutely. um you know so definitely uh interesting and absolutely right i mean the partition resulted in so many deaths mm-hmm. on the basis of um i guess nanny uh sort of says it best uh you know an old englishman fleeing the country wants um India were gained its independence, mm-hmm. so you know really bad, and that's cu- that's before all the other really bad things that happened whilst uh, the British were in India, like yeah. the famine, or just the very much divide and conquer element between the caste system yeah. uh, and so on. So there's huge amounts of. Uh, pretty dreadful things mm-hmm. that happened in in that country, uh, along with Kenya, along with Ireland, yep. you name it. Uh, in Australia, mm-hmm. in Canada, you know, um, dare I say it, attitudes towards Aborigines or First Peoples didn't materialize out of thin air. Mm-hmm. I That's guess. True. That's true. You know. Thanks so much, Jerry. Yeah, thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, over on Facebook at our group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV podcast industries. Dr. Bob Phillips at sporting a Viking beard, I noticed uh, oh. there on Twitter. Yes, in the the Viking capital of Northern England, Jorvik, or also known as York, um, says, <laughs> ooh, we're set up now with a tricky love interest choice for Ms. Marvel. British hunk with evil mum, but lives in the US. Mm -hmm. Or Pakistani smooth with big revenge energy, but not so easy to pop to visit. Assuming she can create the trail of stars which completes her own bootstrap paradox and find another crack in time and space. Dr. Bob. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Indeed. I dare I say it, Pakistani smooth with big revenge energy does sound like... um, some kind of drink, maybe a latte that you could get. You know, it's nice and smooth, but there's a bit of a kick there at the end. So I was thinking alcoholic well, uh, both. for a drink and the revenge element is the wake up the following day. The yeah, hangover, exactly. Yeah. If you've had too many. Exactly. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, Dr. Bob, you forgot about Bruno. Yes. Bruno is the third one. He also lives in the US, doesn't have an evil mom. Is it already a part of the Khan family? Don't forget. About was Bruno. about to have the 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 slow dance, yes, the close encounter when it was rudely interrupted by a uh, British hunk with evil mum, mm-hmm. but lives in the US. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there is Bruno. We've all forgotten about Bruno. No. Fairness, uh, Doctor Bob. Have, we have I think you'll off. find you forgot about Bruno. 
in the love triangle at the start. I didn't. I called it the love triangle. I, I will has replay it to you uh, after we finish Paul recording. Bruno. That's all I can <laughs> I say. I did not forget about Bruno. He's my number one of the three at the moment, just because they've known each other for such a long time. But Kareem's getting up there as well. Cameron, if he didn't have the evil mom, is up there. But he's got that uh, that sad puppy dog thing now because yeah, his mom's left him behind her. and he helped her out. Yeah. So uh, they've all got their benefits. Uh, but no, uh, didn't uh, didn't uh, forget about uh, about Bruno. Thanks, Doctor Bob. Yeah, and we get the bootstrap paradox. as Oh, well. Doctor Bob mentioned the bootstrap paradox. Yes, that's something about uh, time travel when you go back in time uh, to fulfill something that you know has already happened in the past yeah. effectively is apparently the bootstrap paradox and so. hence again another reason why is it kamala that sets the trail of stars yes, for her nanny that would be her bootstrap paradox it if i've got that would. terminology I right think so yes. <laughs> good stuff thanks dr excellent bob. thanks dr bob uh, also over on facebook uh, john daniel says I really enjoyed this one. The Red Daggers offered the background I was hoping for. Kamala does so well with her powers this episode. I loved the fight sequences as much as I loved the conversations between her mum and grandmother. My only question is, when she's fighting and about to fall but catches herself on the solid light, how is that any better Mm. than hitting the ground? It looks (laughs) very, very hard. Um... Yes, thank you, John. Uh-huh. Um, I think I would, I guess, at least in the train station, she wasn't falling too far. I guess if it's a much longer distance, mm. she probably needs to do a, a number of them. of them. And she did do that with the kid who was taking the selfie That's off right. the, the tower yeah. uh, at the mosque. I think she's probably trying to make sure she didn't fall on Kareem with his blade pointed upwards yeah. after. So, Maybe <laughs> so. If it wasn't just falling at the ground, but uh, but yeah, definitely not falling yeah. from a high height onto one of those hard. But lights. certainly <laughs> no soft landings are guaranteed with the solid light. Exactly, exactly. and exactly. kind of crystalline structure as well. So there's pointy bits to it as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I do like the little gag there from uh, from Kareem going, "Where did you learn uh, your tricks?" Was it from Donkey Kong, um, a <laughs> platformer, effectively a platformer video game, and just kind of going, "But that's basically exactly where she learned them from." <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> good stuff. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Good to hear from you and good to hear from all the fellow defenders with your thoughts. We want to hear more from it for the rest of the season. Two more episodes to go on Miss Marvel. We will be back with episode five next week on Miss Marvel. Uh, if you want to send in any thoughts to us, just email us to feedback at TV Podcast Industries. Or as John mentioned, pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries. Yes. And just as a reminder, fellow defenders, we do have a change of pace mm-hmm. in that we are covering The Boys Season 3 as well over on our main feed. And the penultimate episode is out this week as well. It is. Which is on Friday, the 1st of July. Yes, it does. And we've seen it. And uh, another shockingly good episode of the boys as well if you're into the show let's say (laughs) yes and i cannot wait to begin talking about the umbrella academy season three as well yes get watching that get sending in your feedback for that and we will be back with you uh, in a couple of weeks time with uh, with our coverage of the umbrella academy thanks so much for joining us we'll talk to you again next time yeah thank you so much fellow defenders for joining us really good as always chatting with you all things about Miss Marvel. Remember, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. Bye. Bye.